You know, when we talk about the future of healthcare, that's a very daunting topic. And we want to remove some of that daunting aspect to it and try to simplify it by taking one slice of it and say, it really can be more simple if we take a very different perspective. So what I want to do is offer that different perspective. So many of you may be saying, well, what is a WD? WD Partners, we are a customer experience innovation firm. Oh, I used the innovation word, sorry. But we can take you all the way through that journey mapping and research and insights on through to the strategy of what you do and how you do it and what your network looks like, and then take it all the way through to the, de the development, execution, architecture, engineering, and rollout of those concepts. We're thinkers that do. What we offer that's very different is that our clients are the best in breed retailers, consumer goods companies, food service companies. That's our heritage. That's where we've come from. And we don't work with just the small players. We're working with Target, Home Depot, Walmart, Ikea, you name it, we are in there. Starbucks, we're rolling out thousands of Starbucks per year. So we come at it with that kind of mentality, that idea of how do we create experiences that people actually choose to have, who they want to go see. We know that there's a lot going on in the healthcare community today. There are many dynamic forces that are forcing you to innovate and to think about what your patient experience is all about. And there's also a lot of systemic change that's taking place in this market. And when you look at some of what's going on, a lot of it involves retailers. Retailers are at the center of many of these big deals. CVS acquiring Aetna for $69 billion. You don't spend $69 billion unless you're very serious about doing something radical and different. Amazon is getting into the game. There are many things that lead us to say, this is just the beginning of dramatic change. And part of that change is the retailization of healthcare. Retailers are becoming healthcare providers. Make no mistake. They are desperately seeking that growth and future that comes from health and wellness. And they can bring both of those aspects together in many cases. Retail and healthcare are on a collision course. You need to realize that. Retail and healthcare are on a collision course. There are now over 3,000 retail clinics in operation. 10 years ago, there were only 351. CVS has 1,100 minute clinics. They have 9,800 stores. Walmart has 19 Walmart care clinics in operation right now. They have 4,000 stores. Start doing the math. Start looking at that. What happens if they just put a clinic in every one of their stores? And that's just two players. Just two players in this market. Today, a third of consumers have gone to a retail-focused clinic. That was only 15% just three years ago. So this is dramatically changing, and the way consumers are perceiving it is dramatically changing. And in fact, the consumers that over-index to these kinds of clinics are these folks. Households with children, Hispanics, millennials. These are folks that are attracted to this model, that are rejecting the models of the past and are now saying, there's a better way. I want to go to that new mousetrap that's being offered to me. When you ask all Americans, would you be willing to switch your primary care physician? About half of them say, yeah, sure, I'll switch. But when you look at who's most likely to say, yeah, I'll switch, look at the demographics. 18 to 44, 70%, 70% say, yeah, I'll switch. You know why? Because it's inconvenient for me to go to that primary care physician today. I'm willing to trade off a diploma on the wall for an experience that's more convenient and better for me. Healthcare is also being offered in, in a variety of different ways in retail. We already saw what has happened in the optical business. A lot of that business has now moved to what people don't even see as being a healthcare facility anymore. It is now lens crafters or Pearl Vision. And now you see at Costco getting serious about going into hearing aids and audiology. So is Walmart, so is CVS. When you look at now in Costco too, you can get a 3D printed orthotic right there in the store. So healthcare is a growth industry for retailers. That's the way they're viewing it. And they're very serious about taking advantage of that growth. 
Healthcare systems aren't sitting back and saying, oh yeah, sure, go ahead and take all of our patients. That's all right, we're just gonna be okay with that. No, you're looking seriously, just like the last presentation and the one before that, at seriously dialing into the patient experience. What can we do to change? How can we get more serious about that? And you need to, because the Barrel Institute, which was just uh, featured, says that 81% of consumers are unsatisfied with their healthcare experience. You are vulnerable. 75%, your most loyal customers, the people that are, that are coming in for frequent healthcare visits, are 75% of them are dissatisfied with the healthcare experience. But you keep doing the same things. And until you change the way you do it, until you take a different lens, these are the kinds of things that are gonna happen. We have to change. In fact, there's a term that I see at all these conferences, consumerism. If I used the term consumerism at a retail conference, I would get laughed off the stage. You are just discovering that people exist that have choices, that can go someplace else. They don't have to go where you are. They can go anywhere else. That's how far behind healthcare is, that you are just waking up to this reality, that this is even a term. And it's true, though. People are choosing. They're starting to shop, shop for their health care. And that is exactly what they're doing. They have alternatives, and they will choose the alternatives that suit them best. And you're reacting. You're starting to move away from the hospital-centric model, that big, be a myth, monolithic hospital that defines your, your, the way you think in many, way, in many ways. And now it's starting to get closer to the consumer, smaller, more convenient, and more affordable. And that's exactly the direction that needs to happen. When you ask people like yourselves, what are you looking for? How are you looking to do this? Um, the design priorities become convenient location, consistent branding, a soothing environment, wayfinding. It sounds a little bit like a retail chain. Those are exactly the kinds of things that retailers want to do. So you are, in fact, looking for those kinds of retail principles. Urgent care in many of your operations are leading the way. You're starting to apply those principles in that urgent care setting whether it's a specialty urgent care uh, op opportunity or whether it's offered by a healthcare system. But that's, that's part of the process that's starting to change. And that can lead to and be a bellwether for a, a change that you have in your patient experience in those settings and be able to change the culture and be able to change the, the success metrics when you look at it in how you serve those customers in those types of settings. And we're seeing this happening in other parts of healthcare as well. In dental, you're starting to see chain operations like Great Expressions Dental or Heartland or Aspen Dental taking chain types of, of approaches in purely retail settings. One Medical is starting to expand market to market by offering primary care concierge services in much like a retail type setting. They're starting to happen and this is truly going to continue. Make no mistake, the line between healthcare and retail is blurring. And it's not going to stop. When you look at the future of healthcare, according to McKinsey, look at what they're saying. A significant move away from inpatient care. We're seeing declines in inpatient care every day and a move toward outpatient. Lower cost, less capital intensive care. Scale becoming increasingly important. What does scale mean? Chains. If you're not already part of a large system, you probably will be someday because it's happening. Consolidation is occurring. And with consolidation comes scale. A shift to distributed care settings, rising consumer expectations because the rest of life is also occurring. It's not all about healthcare. You have your dining experiences, your shopping experiences. Consumers mounting demand for convenience. This is where the future is. This is reality. And we've seen that before in retailing. We've lived this movie already. There used to be all these downtown department stores that defined the landscape of retail, these giant, monolithic, multi-departmental structures. And we said, if you want to go shopping, you have to go here. That's what we did. And consumers said, you know what? It's a little more convenient for me to go five miles away from my house. And so the market started moving away from those models. And now we can take some lessons away from that. We can say that we have been there in retail, and we understand what has been going on. We will predict what kinds of things you need to understand as you move forward. The first one is location. You have to think like a retailer when you're looking at locations. 
Look at CVS, which, which um, used to be just in strip center locations, now started to dominate corners. They have 9,800 stores, and each one is, is carefully chosen, not just for the access to where consumers are, but also thinking about parking, thinking about ingress, thinking about uh, egress, thinking about all the aspects that make it convenient and easy to shop that store. Street presence, being inviting, drawing people in, make them want to come in. A lot of uh, glazing, a lot of areas where you're saying to customers, beckoning them in with something that is attractive and interesting for them to look at, as well as providing something for them to, to see uh, at night or when they are uh, off hours. Having signature exterior elements so that immediately you become recognizable to customers. And, and they don't have to just study your brand, but there's some unique element that distinguishes you and that provides a, a, a touch point for that customer to know that, that they're coming into your facilities. Being open and having hours that are accessible to consumers, consumer hours, not just our hours. This industry has responded to it, the fast food industry, going late nights. It's not convenient for them to do that but they have to do it to be competitive in tomorrow's landscape. Speaking about the landscape, where are you on that landscape? Most healthcare systems are very much all the same. You look the same, you offer the same kinds of services. How are you differentiating? In the retail market, there's a Nordstrom, but there's also a Walmart. You pick your position, you craft it, and you carefully make your experiences revolve around those market positionings and those, those brand strategies. And that has to happen in the healthcare community as well. And then once you've established that brand, how do you carefully and, and, and very strongly communicate that brand consistently over and over again? Again, branding is not necessarily the strong suit of the healthcare community, but it needs to be. And then the customer experience. What do customers see? What are the cues? What are the ways that you communicate with them uh, when they go through the, the, the experience in your, in your facilities? The retail experience, there's a lot of movement, and that's what happens in, in outpatient. You can have the opportunity for movement, for browsing, for education, engagement. So many things that make retail fun and interesting, you can bring even into your facilities versus the cues that we have in the medical community of sitting, of waiting, sterile, cold, intimidating, frightening for customers, not engaging. This is what we have to break away from, eliminate those cues from their, uh, from their model. Omnichannel. I've heard a lot about technology, but we have to bring technologies that's useful, that is truly part of their process, part of the overall experience, that is endemic to the overall experience, and that makes it easy and fruitful for the customer to engage in their facility. And then building for scale. Starbucks has 25,000 stores around the world. We're doing about 1,000 every year for them. And yet, they look very much alike. Every one of them is locally adapted. There are templates, there is a kit of parts, there is a tiering strategy, but you have to apply that tiering strategy with the brand in mind and knowing what needs to go where based on that community but also based on the brand. But that kind of efficiency has to be there because they have to do a lot of stores, but yet each one is very careful and very uh, important to them as well. So you have to balance that, but being able to apply scale is gonna become increasingly important in healthcare. As we look to the future, designing for the future is really a one plus one equals three. What we see here is that we can't be all retail, but we also can't be all medical. We have to combine retail principles with what we do best in the medical community. But most importantly, we also have to think about a new model, a new way of offering healthcare that does bring these things together and does bring these things to the forefront. We also have to think about not all healthcare is the same. There's been a lot of discussion and, and there's, a, there's a hospital centricity, but yet hospitals really represent this high acuity situation, which is certainly profitable for you. But there's also a whole nother world that you offer, which is much more low acuity. And in many ways, that is a very important aspect for you to not only have touches with the consumer. I heard uh, at a recent conference a, a person from Piedmont Health that said that they track the interactions with their, customer, with their customers. And they saw that 92% of the interactions that the system had with their customers were taking place outside of a hospital setting. 92%. That's a lot of touches. And so that is traffic in the retail vernacular. That's a relationship. 
And that's also share building, so that when the time comes when they need the high acuity situation, you are their provider of choice. But it's important to recognize that the high acuity decision processes are very different. The need states are different. And the experiences should be different too. We can view them in different ways to really look at how do we optimize that day-to-day, -day, everyday touch point with those customers? How do we make that the best that it can be? I implore you to shift your thinking. Move away from just this hospital-centric mentality. Don't just take your low acuity settings and, make, and shrink down the hospital to those smaller boxes. And don't just look at every project as a one-off project. Just like the last presentation, how do we modularize? How do we scale? How do we think of this in repeatability? Because increasingly, that's going to be an important cue for you as you move forward in your business. And how do we get true consumer centricity? How do we put the consumer at the center? Today, the practitioners tend to rule the roost. But until we make the consumer the driver, that is going to be something that's going to be challenging for this business competitively in this market. How do we make consumers the center? We have to create an ecosystem that makes the consumer the center. It's experience-led. It is consumer-focused and consumer-controlled, engaging those consumers, incorporating the best elements of both medical and retail, and combining a physical experience with a technology experience, personalizing it for that customer, because we have the information and the data to do that, making it easy, intuitive for them, and having an element of lifestyle and a daily pattern. Not just when you need something, not just when it's an emergency, but how do we engage customers in a continuous basis? Wellness services, health services that are part of everyday living. That's when we can have a true experience that is an ecosystem for health and wellness for the consumer. So going forth, the market needs some new things. New experiences, holistic journeys for the consumer. New models that are innovation, not the same old stuff that's led to 81% dissatisfaction. New models. And then, once we figure out what those new models are, creating scale. Not just experimentation, but a land grab, because that is what's going to happen. How fast do you think that those retailers will be able to roll out uh, healthcare solutions? They have a lot of money, they have a lot of clout, and it's coming. So you have to be able to react quickly as well. So as we look to the future, you may like or not like Donald Rumsfeld, but this is a great quote that he has. There are known knowns. There are some things we know. It doesn't take a crystal ball to be able to see what's going to happen in this industry. You know this is coming. It's happening. The question is, we have to stop talking about it. This is a business that likes to talk a lot at these conferences. It's time to act. It's time to do this. It's time to start getting serious about deploying a different strategy when it comes to these low acuity settings. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it.